So are we on? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Victoria Park. Let's make it official. It's preliminary final day in Group 6 Rugby League. It's that time of the week again. The match of the round in Group 6 of Country Rugby League. Brought to you by the team at Group 6 League Live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Victoria Park. It's preliminary final day in Group 6 Rugby League. Four matches on offer today, the first of which is the Women's Rugby League preliminary final between Mossvale and Thelmere. I'm Mike Sheen. Great to have you along for the coverage here on MacArthurSportsRadio.com and also through the uh, live stream being provided, Memory Moments Media providing the live stream today. Joining me in commentary is our regular co-commentator, Craig Davis. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, listeners. Yeah, going to be a good day of footy. We've got four games on offer. This first one, the Women's Rugby League Preliminary Final, Mossvale and Thirlmere is our opening match. Looking forward to this. Um, I haven't seen too many games of um, Women's Tackle Rugby League, so I'm really looking forward to um, this match this morning. Uh, it should be an interesting game, this one. Uh, Mossvale won 18-10 over Picton in extra time two weeks ago in the minor semi-final, and last week Camden were too strong for Thirlmere in the major semi-final, meaning the Roosters qualify for today's match. As we uh, get set for this opening game of four, we do have the four matches on offer today. They schedule the next game, at, or uh, the first game at 10.15, Mossvale and Thilmy. Then at 11.30, the under-18s match between Norellan and Mount Annan. Reserve grade at 1.15, Thilmy and Picton. That should be a great game. And then at 3 p.m., the first grade preliminary final, the Camden Rams and the Picton Magpies. All those eight teams fighting for a spot in next Sunday's grand finals at Campbelltown Stadium. Now, we might just uh, go through last... <laughs> To take well, they were the minor premiers uh, this year. Yeah. So they've gone out in straight sets. The Southern Highland Shield preliminary final. Barrel 18, Thilmy 16. And the second division match saw Campbelltown City defeat Picton 20 points to 18. Was now, it, or did Picton beat Campbelltown City? No, Campbelltown City got up. Not what you told me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, Campbelltown City got home in a... In a tight one last night, 2018. So the grand final is the replay of the uh, major semi. The major semi, that's right. We can hear the applause down below for the Mossvale Dragons. Let's go through the two teams for the Women's Rugby League preliminary final. And uh, Craig, I'll get you to go go through those teams. Well, this is this is what we've got. Mossvale Dragons, Amber, Val Middl Amber Middleton, Maddie Rosa, Sarah East, Kira Runbuck, Leah Acton, Hannah Watman as captain, Courtney Picker, Emily Blundick, Ali Acton, Gretel Tut, Amy Miller, Kate Defina, and Nat Kamefsky. And for Thelmy. We've got Jamie Witten, Jessica Neal, Rani Lee, Kate Lane, Ashley Macon, Vanessa Thompson, Lisa King, Maddie Charlesworth, April Stons, Summer Mikolov. Uh, that'll be Desiree... Is that all the one name? I would assume so. so. It looks like we've got here Desiree <laughs> Hammerbud, Ellie Pinney. Now, I don't know if that's two separate ladies. If it is, I apologise. <laughs> then we've got Jessica Harvey, Cindy Kay, Michaela Malcolm, Gabby Panazzo, Taylor Timms, Bernie Lee and Jessica Watts. OK, they're the teams for today's Women's Rugby League preliminary final. I'm pretty sure we run uh, 25 minutes each way in this uh, Women's Rugby League format. The Roosters... We'll be defending the northern or town end of the ground in the opening half. 
The Dragons will be running right to left on your radio and defending the southern end of the ground. Uh, I think Thormir might just be too strong in this, but the, the Dragons, you can read our previews on MacArthurSportsRadio.com. Uh, the, pre, the preview, I, I said, I th Thormir's probably got the skill uh, for the, the match, but I, I think uh, Mossvale certainly has the heart. Uh, and we saw that in the, the, the minor semi-final a couple of weeks ago. And leaning towards the Roosters, but this will be tight. Referee Mark Brown says, let's go. We're away in the Women's Rugby League preliminary final. And it's gone into touch off the kickoff. Good start by um, Mosfar. Very good start. Yeah. Angled kick aimed for the touch line. And it'll be a scrum feed to the Dragons 25 metres out. in uh, 20 in from touch on the western side of the ground. Must say it's a beautiful morning down in the Wallandilly. Uh, we've been here for about an hour or so. And it's a gorgeous Sunday morning. In the Wallandilly, if you've got it's nothing um, on today, it is windy, but on the not as bad on as ground, yesterday. On ground level, there's hardly any wind blowing, but yeah. up higher, because the ground's in a bit of a in a valley, in a bit of a valley. So the winds. So if you want to come out, as Mike was saying, if you want to come out, it's a great day to watch football. Indeed, it is. If you're at the ground, you can listen on FM 107.0 or via the website MacArthurSportsRadio.com and click on Listen Live to enjoy Group 6 Rugby League action. Here are the Dragons on the attack, 10 metres out. There's uh, Gretel Tut taking it forward for the Dragons on the western side of the ground. Only a minute gone in the first half. Sloppy ball out of dummy half, eventually through the hands to Emily Bundy. And there's three Roosters there to stop her. Centre field, acting into dummy half, and the ball goes to ground. Turnover there from Courtney Picker, so it'll be a scrum feed to the Roosters. I guess a little bit of early nerves for both these teams. 90 seconds gone, no score. Yeah, I think both of them are a little bit um, on edge at the moment. They're looking to see who's coming and, and trying to do things before they actually get the ball in hand. Uh, the, the Dragons 10 metres out from the Mosfa, uh, from the Thirlmere line. The Roosters with the scrum feed their first of the day for ozskilled.com.au, your local RPL specialist. Mention MacArthur Sports Radio for a 15% discount on your next qualification. Here's a chance for the Roosters. Over the oh. halfway, great don't argue there from Jessica Neal on Kira Runbuck. Great don't argue there right on halfway on the Western Touch line. Great, the Roosters now with a little bit of possession. There's Vanessa King giving it off to uh, the second rower there for the Dragons. Opponents in Thirlme there. Eight metres inside, Mossval Territory to the right-hand side. There's Thompson, short ball to the outside. Lisa King, there's four of them there. They drive her back in a big tackle, 40 metres out, 20 metres in. Western side, we've got bodies on the ground everywhere. Looks like a Mossval player down. Craig, keep an eye on that. Yeah, she's not moving. That's a concern as we see the Dragons on the defensive. Only 19 metres out from the line. They go to the left-hand side, Thilmy. There's uh, Thompson once again orchestrating play. There's a good run inside, and that'll be the opening try of the day to the Roosters. Mossvale protesting about the injured player, but it'll be a try on three minutes to Thirlmere. They lead it four points to nil for Kip McGrath, Norellan, and Campbelltown. Yeah, the injured player really didn't have any um, impact on the play. She was in the background, but I guess it keeps one out of the defensive line, doesn't it? Certainly does. So the Roosters... Lead at 4-0. It looks like it's the... Uh, uh, I believe she's back up on her feet now. Yeah, I've got a feeling that's the... Uh, I think it's the, the number 7, is it? I just want to check No, it's that. not the 7. Just trying to confirm who that is, but the replacement is made. Giovanna Alvarez going on. That was a big hit there. I think she's a bit winded. It doesn't look like anything serious. Anything too serious, anyway. Turn around so we can see your number. Yeah, it's the uh, the 13. 11? 11 or 13? No, it's the 13. Nat Kamchevsky. He was put flat on her back. And that big run upfield. I think she ended up on the bottom, didn't she? There was yeah. A, there was two or three left the, in there, the tackle. There and, was uh, about five of them there in yeah, the tackle. And she was the one on the bottom of the on the bottom of the pack. Conversion is successful from in front, so it's six nil. Thelmy leads Mossvale in this women's rugby league. In the first half, it's 6-0 after four minutes. 
Head back to halfway now. Yeah, Thelmy did look good with the ball. That was a good inside pass there and a good done. The player straightened on a run and came back across the defence and um, Mosfell had no answer to her. They just couldn't quite. So that was actually Maycomb getting the try. Summer Mikolev with the conversion. But 6 0 in favour of the Roosters after only about four minutes. We get back underway. Fine Sunday morning again. A deep kick towards the touchline. This time they let it bounce the Roosters. Jamie Whitten falls on it in the end, but she's inside her own 20. You can hear the Mossvale bench and supporters urging their team on. There's Maddie Charlesworth out of dummy half. That's a, a good, good, good run. Ten, good 10, 15 metre run from dummy half, that? That was a great run from Charlesworth out of dummy half. Now it's uh, Jessica Neal got the ball away on the outside. That looks like uh, the session roller there. Big tackle there. And we've got a I think Mossvale player I think down. Mossvale girl got palmed off, but I think it hit her in the face. I think she got palmed to the face. Yeah. I actually followed the ball, so I didn't no, see. No, the ball runner palmed her off. But then she's just gone straight back. She's just fallen straight back onto her back, hold, clutching her face as she fell down. So it looks like she's copped something yeah. to the head, whether it was accidental Intentional or not. or not. I'm not sure, but um, the trainers are out there showing a bit of uh, concern. Yes, well, we had a, a serious injury yesterday, which uh, caused a few issues. Unfortunately, I don't have an update on that one for those who were with us yesterday. Yeah. Well, the number 20 is up on the feet now, so she's uh, getting some water. And for those who've just joined us, it's 6 0 Thilmy leads Mossvale. We have only had about four minutes in the first half. A couple of stoppages as we get back underway. I believe we're playing 25 minute halves. Good run from Thilmy. There's the, the front row, April Stons. Over the 40, five short of halfway. Yeah, she straightened up the attack then. That was a good um, good run. Now they'll go wide to the right-hand side. They seem to be running a lot of cross field, tell me, but when they turn it back inside to a runner coming straight, they look, like, look a lot better. First penalty of the day for all skilled. Goes the way of the Roosters for not releasing. And go. In, fact, that, in fact, that's actually Storms in the 12. Well, I'm just updating my team sheet here. It looks like we've had a few jumper changes to the... Uh, well, in the program for filming, we've got, we don't have a name against the number one, but there's definitely a number one out there. Yeah, that is... Uh, uh, Makarea. Yeah, Makarea. <laughs> Couldn't help yourself, could you? No. Actually, it's no, uh, Mara, Mara Ia. Well, you give me bumps to you there, mate. But tell me he's gone out wide. They should score here in the corner. They head for the corner. Did she get no, it down? No, she's into, gone, into, gone touch. into touch. Great defence there by Mosfell on the line. It certainly was good defence from the Dragons. There's a three-on-one out there, and Mosfell tightened up and um, put her into touch. Looks like we've got all sorts of number changes here to the... Thilmier outfits, our apologies if we uh, have got a few of these these numbers wrong uh, and these names wrong in the early stages. I might have to update this over the next, uh, over the next few minutes. A lot of one out running by Mossvale at the moment. The dummy half seems to be craving across, but no one's going, no one's running straight. Dummy half again's gone across. They've lost about 10, 15 metres in those three tackles. They're still inside their own team, the, Roos, the Dragons. They trail 6 0. We've only had about seven minutes in the first half. Oh, knock on. And an error from the, from the Dragons coming out of their own end. So the Roosters on the attack, 10 metres out, just to the left of centre field. Yeah, Phil me. even though they were defending, they made a lot of um, ground in their defence with their tackles. They've certainly made that a focus, the Roosters, to get their defensive line in order. They've got an overlap out here if they go through the hands. 
Oh, bad pass. Ball goes to Grant, and it, was it knocked on there? Or referee's going to no, say, referee's no. say no. Good hands, Shane, there in the end. Okay, I think we've got most of our numbers in order here for knock the... On it down, knock on a dummy half. So we have got that error after all from the the Roosters. So it'll be a scrum feed to Mossvale. So the team now reads Mararea at fullback, Neil and Lane oh. on the wings. It's uh, Harmer, Bud and Lee in the centres. Macon and Charlesworth are the halves. The front row is now uh, King, Thompson and Pinozzo. The back row is Mikalev, Stons and Harvey. So apologies there if we got the names wrong in the early stages. It's a, game with a, a little bit of afters there in the tackle and the referee's going to penalise Bill Mir for not rolling away. The problem with Mossvale at the moment is they're running one out and across the field. No one's trying to go forward. They're going they're going sideways and you can't go sideways. There's a good run here by the Straight front up the middle. That's a great run from Mossvale. She's still going too. Up towards the 30. Fins our couple out of the way. That was the centre in Harmer. Bud who wore it, don't argue. To the 40 now. The Dragons are up and about. They've got plenty of supporters here in the red and white today at Victoria Park. That was a big run by the number 20 there. Uh, that was Bernie Lee making that run. That was a great run. And another big fend there. Three of them in to make the tackle. Eight short of halfway. 20 in from touch. Western side of the ground. They come back to the right-hand side. That's the front rower there in uh, Pinozzo. Can she get it out the back? She can. That's uh, a good ball away to Thompson. Did that go forward? Yes. Yeah, it's just a little one. Pass over the top, went down to her feet. Down around the boot around her ankles. She couldn't quite pick it up. Had a bit of a juggle and uh, knocked it on. Just went forward from the from the dragon. So 40 metres out in centre field, this scrum feed to Thirlmere. We've had nearly 10 minutes in the first half. It's 6-0. Thirlmere leads Mossvale in the Women's Rugby League preliminary final. And great to see Women's Rugby League on display in the 2019 season. Been a welcome addition, Craig, to see the uh, the Women's Rugby League competition. They're very skillful, some of these ladies out there today. Very talented. And some of these hits uh, showing plenty of skill. There's, uh, uh, that's the centre in Harmer Bud. Some of those big don't argues. I, yeah. like, I wouldn't like to be on the end of one. <laughs> Me either. It's a lot easier up here, I'll tell you that. There's Charlesworth with it. Now getting it out to Pinozzo. Pinozzo inside the 20. There's a good, strong, hard run up the middle. It's a great run from Pinozzo. She's 19 metres out. There's bodies everywhere. Slow play the ball. Doesn't help the Thelmy cause. Thompson to Charlesworth. Through the hands to Macon. They've got, another, they've still got, they've got another three person overlap out there. They've got three on the outside. Rani Lee for the line inside the 10. If she would have gone through the hands, I think Thelmy would have scored in the corner. They come back to the right hand side. Short ball finds Ellie Pinney for the line. She's over. That was good, good play there. Nicely worked. 11 minutes gone, it's 10 nil. Thirlmere leads Mossvale in this Women's Rugby League preliminary final. The winner to meet Camden next week in the grand final. Is that on Sunday? That is on Sunday it's morning. On Sunday, so same, that's the, first, the same times as today? Same as today. So that'll be a 10.15 kickoff at Campbelltown Stadium next Sunday morning. And uh, we should have four cracking matches on offer uh, next week. They all look like they're making an image change. The number 20 is coming on the field now. I don't know who's um, that's, uh, going to replace. That's Bernie Lee about to come on. Not sure who she's replacing. Um, it's the, I think that was the... I think that's uh, Lisa King who's getting a spell. I think so. And that's Lisa King and getting a healthy round of applause from the Thilmy supporters. And there is a good crowd here. I've got to say a very good crowd in early. That is King having a seat. A very good crowd early on. They're very vocal too, which is good yes. to hear, which is good to see and hear. Yes, definitely. Nicolette, one from one with the boot. From in front, pops it over. It's 12 nil. Thelmy leads Mossvale. We've got about 13 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. She's only just getting them over the post. I'd hate to see what she, if she gets one out in the corner, whether she's going to get it high enough off the ground to go over the post or not. But uh, so far, under two tries have been scored under the post, so she doesn't have to worry about it. Well, as long as it goes, I think we made the comment last week. As long doesn't matter how pretty it looks as long no, as it goes over. Over the crossbar and between the posts, two points are recorded. Nobody cares uh, how it works as long as it gets over that crossbar. The book shows two from two, and that's all that matters. But yeah, four teams in this women's rugby league competition this year, Craig. I know there is certainly talk of more teams uh, fielding well, know, teams um, next year. 
I know Narellan are looking for trying to yeah. field a and tackle I, side because they're asking for coaches and players to see if they're interested. I can certainly say Oren Parker interested and have done a similar thing. Put the, the call out, the kickoff bouncing around, fielded by Harmer Budge and did very well to take that in the end. Oh, great hit. There. Shoulder charge though, it's a shoulder charge. It's a shoulder charge, so penalty to a little bit of afters here. She certainly wiped her out with that shoulder charge. Penalty to the Roosters. Penalty count 2-1 for Osskilled. Straight away concerned. The, the 11 from Mossvale is uh, in a bit of trouble Amy there. Amy Miller. Yeah, she's come out of the defensive line and shoulder charge runs straight into the, <laughs> into the Thelmy player and just wiped her out. Unfortunately, the shoulder is illegal. Mm. I think, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that I think Mark Brown's going to take some action. You might see the girl in the simbin for a few minutes. Yes, and you can see, we can certainly see him gesturing. See what he's, he's talking, he's speaking. Oh, obviously, that's the Mossvale captain that he's talking to. Yeah, and that the, they have to wrap the arms around. Yes, he's telling him that she didn't wrap the arms around. And, there was um, no, no attempt to wrap the arms around, which is a, a, a minimum these days that you must... Wrap the arms around. So he's, he's now calling the um, player over. Yeah, it certainly will go on report. And he, he explaining that you didn't wrap the arms around the uh, the player when you made the tackle. No, it'll just be a caution. Yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't give it 10 minutes in the bin. Penalty for a shoulder charge. As we get back underway, they take the tap. Straight up the middle goes uh, Bernie Lee for the Roosters. 12 short of halfway. Just finishing that point. I know Oren Parker also looking for for a women's tackle side for next year. So certainly aware of a couple. I would imagine someone like Campbelltown City would probably be keen as well. Oh, big hit there. The two number 20s collide well, Bundy on it, Lee. Campbelltown City have got two um, Oztag sides. So, But then speaking, I spoke to, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll give him up on this occasion, Mitch Heath. Mitch Heath. The coach of the uh, women's rugby league side for Thelmy, uh, he made the comment that uh, there are a lot of girls who do not want to play tackle that want to play tag, and there are just as many that want to go the other way. That want to go the other way. So just because they've got two league tag sides, it doesn't mean that they've got a, a tackle side out of it. Certainly not. A penalty to Thelmy here. A couple of big hits in uh, in defence here from the... No, it's not a, it's not a penalty, Mike. It's a um, oh, no, knock-on. an error. It's okay. a knock-on in the tackle and um, scrum feed to uh, Mossvale. Mossvale. I thought it was a penalty. The uh, reaction, I thought they'd uh, they'd won the penalty there, Mossvale. So I'll have to change our sheet. So Yeah, no, mate. You have to put that down to... Um, yeah, scrum feed to Mossvale. So a hard tackle and just the ball coughed up. Yeah, well, that's good defence from the Dragons. They've certainly... They've certainly tightened up since those two tries were scored. Yeah, and, and this on paper should be a very even contest. Uh, Mossvale, they did trail, I think it was 10 nil last week, or oh, two weeks ago in the minor semi. Uh, got it back to 10 all and then won 18 10 in extra time. See, the problem at the moment is that they're going one out and they're going across the field. Thelmy were playing as a team, two and three passes along the line, whereas Thelmy were in, uh, sorry, the Mossvale side were just taking one out hit ups. And there's no support there. I can see uh, Bundy. Taking it forward from Mossvale, but and absolutely just, no support. Yeah, and just got driven back 10, 15 metres yeah. in the tackle. And, but no one on a shoulder to uh, to assist. There's a spiral torpedo. Good luck under that. No, oh and yes. Macarea's put it down. Hey, Macarea couldn't hold on to that one. No, that, was a, that was a very good um, up and under. Well, that was a midfield, great midfield bomb. Oh, sweet strike there from... Uh, from Mossvale, they'll get the scrum feed just inside the 30. She never looked like taking the ball, did she? No. And and, and to be fair, I've seen a lot better players oh. put those down. They're a, a nightmare at the best of times. As it was it was a spiral bomb, so they're very difficult to take. And, and they are difficult at the best of times. Uh, it does look like there's a little bit of a breeze. I think it's coming from behind us here on the western side. That looked like it was a fraction high. Mossvale wanted a penalty. She got bulldog to the ground, didn't she? Yes. The old rag doll tackle. They're very flat here, Mossvale. In attack. That's Alvarez. Good hit there from Thilmy. 30, uh, 30 metres out. Coming off the back fence there. That looks like... Uh, the Mossvale ladies are more competitive than, than their uh, male counterparts. At least yes. they've got a team in the competition. They're going really well, these young ladies. They certainly are. Gretel Tut was the uh, runner. Now it's Hannah Watman, the captain. Only makes a couple of metres. 28 metres out in centre field. Picker 
Puts the kick in, not a bad kick. Will it sit up? It will sit up there for Jessica Neal. Neal over the 10. As we were talking uh, last week, Mike, with um, Dorella in the reserve grade side, so we were saying that um, Kepi, a name synonymous with the yes. Northern Jets, you see that young Sean made Sean. his um, NRL debut for um, Manly on um, Friday night. On Friday night, and I did post an article, which I did see posted by an NRL official. Um, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Thormier on the attack. No, good defence. Great run from Mo Mosvale, uh, from Norella, and that was Mar Mararea. Over the 40. She certainly made up for that drop ball. Certainly did. There's uh, Bernie Lee. Fends off one, but there's two, three, four in there to put it to ground. Five short of halfway. Ten in from touch. Western side. They lead it 12-0. Uh, Eight minutes remaining first half. Now through their hands. There's Ashley Macon taking on the line. Has oh, numbers on the ball. outside. That was a great ball. And now oh, it goes to luck. ground. Two passes wider. She took it to the line. Committed the defender. Offloaded, but it was unfortunate that Mikulev the... Um, got the ball away, but the outside support couldn't hold yeah, on. I think she was looking up at the trial line thinking, I'm mm. going to score here. I'm and a just, took her, here. just took her eye off the ball. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I did share that uh, that story on from uh, NRL.com that uh, they posted about Sean Kepi and his uh, days uh, in the Jets' colours. And, I mean, the 10, 15 minutes or so that he got on Friday night, he didn't do anything wrong. He, I, he missed his first I, tackle. I, I didn't get to see... He missed his first tackle, but did a couple of good hit-ups and um, fairly strong in defence. So um, the commentators gave him a little bit of a rap. So, um, and, and I heard, uh, I did read in that article that he said if uh, if he keeps producing the goods, uh, Des Hasler is going to keep picking him, especially with all their, especially their injuries and suspensions. So especially if Martin Tapao gets suspended on um, for the weekend's game. Yeah, he, he'd be a big chance of... Playing in that semi-final, which I think, and I'll have to double. Well, they're either going to be playing the Tigers or the Sharks. That's what I was about to say. I think they might be playing the Tigers. Yes, the Tigers uh, or the Sharks. Whoever wins that game, unless it's a draw, and then the Broncos <laughs> are out. And then the conspiracy it's... theory. <laughs> but um, but Manly look like they'll play the winner of that match. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely play the winner of the Tiger Sharks game at uh, Lotto Land. I think it's Saturday night at 7:30. I haven't seen it. I've... I saw the on. Um, Fox League last night. Right. They, okay. would, they the said Friday, that would be the, the late game. The Friday night game is um, Roosters and South. South. Once again. The Sunday game is going to be the one at uh, Bank West Stadium. Which will be Parramatta. Parramatta and... Is it Canberra? No, it's Parramatta and the Broncos like, at the moment is it's how it stands. Oh, that's the, the elimination match. Yeah. Yeah. And the two the Saturday the early Saturday, game would the, be the Canberra... The Canberra game, yeah. Canberra match. Is that in Canberra? I think it is, yeah, because they finished fourth. Uh, then they would be away. Well, Top two get the home home. So they're, yeah, sorry, then they're, pl they're playing Melbourne. In Melbourne. In Melbourne. So that'll be the 5.30 game with the, yeah, and the Manly the, game. And then the Manly game at 7.40. At, at 7.30 on the Saturday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it came up on um, after the game. After the, the game's yet Friday last night. night. Last night. That, yeah. um, they put it up saying this is what it's going to be until they work out whether it's Tigers or Sharks. But yeah, and that's the only... Proviso is uh, who's uh, who's going to be playing in that. But the Saturday night game is definitely Manly versus the, the winner, winner of, of Tigers of Sharks. that game. Okay, we have had a little bit of scrappy football here for those listening uh, on radio. We have had a couple of knock-ons. The ball is 20 metres out. It'll be a filmy scrum feed. 20 out from their own uh, from the Mossvale line. Five to go. First half. Yeah, I think the Mossvale dummy half had a look. Before she went to pick up Had a little ball. bit of a Captain Cook there. And he's Macon to the outside. Good run there from, Ash from uh, Ashley Macon. It'll be a great run from Ashley Macon. It's a try to the Roosters. That's their third. And that came about because they had a three-person overlap out wide. She took it to the line. Mosvale hung off, expecting her to offload to Waiting the for the pass. Players, and it didn't come. She straightened up and just um, went under the post without a hand. I, I can her. remember learning as a very, very young boy, the most the most dangerous player on the field. It's the one with the ball in hand. It's the one with the football. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that at a very young age. That I don't know how many times you coach it. Say, oh. No dummies, no dummies. Take the player with the ball The most at dangerous all player on the field is the one with the ball. And the, the Dragons found that out the hard way. So Mikulev will try and convert. She's two from two this morning. And once again, it's close to the and post. Very adjacent to the uprights. Not directly in front, but only only five to the left-hand side. But as a goal kicker, that's what you want your team to do. Get you as close to the post as possible. 
And to be fair to uh, Macon, she did bring it around. Well, she did cut back in. Yeah, she, she brought it around back towards the posts when she made the run. She was probably another 10 metres to the outside. But uh, well, well, if she would have kept it going and passed it to the girls outside of her, they would have scored further out. Yeah. They wouldn't have come but she back made in. a point of coming because back. Because she cut back in off her right foot, she was able to um, step back inside. So Mick left to make it 18 nil for Kip McGrinder Ellen and Campbelltown. She does add the extras. 18 nil the score. And that was a better strike than the last two she had. Certainly was. And we'll just wait for the, uh, the our screen here to update, but it, that'll make it 18 nil with about three minutes remaining in the first the half. The only thing missing here in Victoria Park is the scoreboard, isn't mm, it, Mike? Yep. It's the only thing that's missing there's a good clubhouse there's a good um a lot of parking around the ground and yes. missing is a scoreboard yes i'm which sure you can be which you could say about a lot of um, <laughs> the group six grounds well a lot of them are, are certainly working on that that one's going to go out on the fall from the kickoff yeah, you can tell the most are getting a little bit desperate now they're trying trying that little bit harder and they just put too much um oomph in that yes, kickoff. a little too much carry on that one. Well, because the first kickoff of the day they found touch, so they thought they were going to do the same thing. Well, they've had all three have gone to this western side about 25 metres out. They've almost had success on all on of each kickoffs. one of them. Yeah, that one was just a little bit too hard off the boot. Cindy K, 38 metres from the line. A couple of minutes to half time on our clock. There's the 11 in Summer Mikalev, three from three with the boot. For the second rower, one of the few girls who does play tackle and tag. Uh, Summer Mikalev. Yeah, I think um, Gemma Crane for Norellan plays, yeah, tag, plays for tag as well. And tackle for Camden. Yeah, pretty sure she does, but she'd be one of the very few to. Yeah, uh, there's not that many that I can see. No. <coughs> Certainly not that many. There's uh, Jessica Neal, 10 metres from the line. Greg, the Roosters on the attack yet again. And if she would have taken it to the line offloaded, she had um, players to spare out to the left. They keep going to that left-hand side. They've got numbers there. And there is the fourth try of the day. I think that might have been uh, Maddie Charlesworth getting over. So once again, they drifted out to the left. Mossvale followed. She then cut back in off the right. Straight under the defence to score. I should actually point out that's the second try of the day to Ashley Makem uh, for the for the Roosters. Uh, she's got a double, and we've got time off here with 109 remaining on our clock. And it's 22 nil in favour of the uh, Roosters. Yeah, I think it's going to be difficult for Mossvale to come back from this one. I, I think this might be a bridge too far to uh, to get that. Yeah, I think so to bridge that gap. So a minute remaining in the first half. Take a break at half time and we'll come back and analyse the opening 25 minutes of this Women's Rugby League. As much as the score's blown out a bit, Mossvale is still giving it all um, they've got. Absolutely. Toughest kick of the day for Summer Mikalev, uh, be 20 in from touch, only about 12 metres out. Tight angle for the second rower. Struck it sweetly, just over the crossbar. Just over the crossbar. I was actually about to say she just missed, but yeah, you're just about to say they dropped under the bar. Yes. Under the bar. I, I thought that too, but then I saw the flags go up in the yeah. point. No, it's one over. That was Matty Charlesworth with the try. So that brings us to now to 24 zip. That does for Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown. Nicolette, four from four. Let's see what they do with this kickoff. They're going to the same spot. She's pointing to she's pointing to the sideline where she's kicked off to before. That one a little, bit, a little deeper, bit deeper. And it bounces, sits up nicely for Neil in the final seconds of the first half. That's a great run. That really sums up this competition. The winger put her ears back. Yep. And decided I'm taking this on I'm head gonna, first. I'm going to take him on. I'm going to take him on head first and go straight, straight down the line, and had no, no sense of uh, preservation or anything like that. There's the siren for half time, so this will be the last play of the break, the last play of the half rather before the break. 
And they'll work it to the outside here, Thormy, oh, but it goes to ground. To, otherwise, there was a big chance out there. There was... Oh, a little bit of, This is getting a bit willing, some of yes, these hits. Yeah, getting very willing. Like I said, I wouldn't like to be on the end of some yeah, of them. Definitely not. It is halftime in the Women's Rugby League preliminary final. Thilmy 24 leads Mosvale nil. We'll take a break here on Grip 6 League Live. Back in a moment. We'll be back shortly to bring you the best of the on-field action from the team of Group 6 League Live. Don't forget to check us out online. Just search Group 6 League Live on Facebook. That's where you can find us, Group 6 League Live on Facebook. Halftime here at Victoria Park. The Women's Rugby League preliminary final. And it's Thilmy 24 leading Mossvale nil at the break. Mike Sheenan, Craig Davis with you at the break. And uh, we are now live on air here at the ground. You can tune into FM 107.0 if you're 
you're at the ground to listen to the calls all day long if you're setting up shop here at Victoria Park. Make sure you tune in. 107.0 FM on your radio or via MacArthurSportsRadio.com. Click on Listen Live. Also the MixLR app. We have posted it on the Group 6 League Live Facebook page. If you can't find the link or you're looking for it, just head to Group 6 League Live on Facebook. You'll see the link there. Belmira just coming back out into the field now. Yeah, Mossvale having a chat in a huddle down in the and on the touch line. And the final rev up for the girls. And not to be uh, not to be flippant or disrespectful, but it's been a pleasantly surprising uh, skill level shown by both teams. It's been one way traffic though, Mike. Um, it has. Bell me. Uh, what would you say? They're laying a platform up the middle before they're swinging the ball wide, whereas yeah. Mossvale are going sideways they're too much. They're going a little bit too laterally. Yeah, and um, a lot of one out running, whereas Thelmere are, are going through the hands. We're underway for the second half, 25 minutes each way. That's been, uh, well, it was attempted to be trapped by Mossvale. It bounced off the league and went forward. Thelmere come up with it, and as you said, straight away, they, two or three passes there. Nikolev ends up with it. 32 metres out. It's not what that's not what Mosfar wanted from the kickoff. No, certainly not. They put it through their hands this time to the outside. There's April Stons. And gets the ball away to uh, the centre in Harmer Bud. Desiree Harmer Bud plays it. Inside the 20 now, Filmier on the attack. See so that run from the Filmier player straight up the middle of the ruck. Mm. Nothing, nothing fancy, not going sideways, just setting a platform up the middle now that they're going to swing it wide. They'll come to the left-hand side. That's a good short ball there for uh, the second rower in Mikolev, who's pulled down a metre out from the line. Opening try of the second half of his. It's on its way. Only a minute gone in the second term. That's a great little step there from the number six. Ashley Maycomb has two in the first half. Gets the ball away to the outside. There's Stons once again. She's going to be dragged to ground. Got the ball away. I thought it might have gone forward. It has. It has, yeah. It has gone forward. So all that hard work for the Roosters breaks down when the pass goes as, forward. As much as they're going wide, they, that time they probably should have just taken the tackle, set up for the next play instead of trying to go for the miracle offload. So 24-0. Phil Mee leads Mossvale. 90 seconds gone in the second half. Mike Sheen and Craig Davis with you on MacArthur Sports Radio. That's the Kip McGrath, Norellina and Campbelltown scoreboard. We thank Kip McGrath, Norellina and Campbelltown for their support in 2019, along with Ausskilled and our favourite business of uh, all of them. Forte Financial. He got it out. Well done. First time of asking. Good morning, David Bowen and the crew at Forte Financial. We thank I've been, been practising for you, mate. <laughs> He's been working all week on it. A little error from... Mossvale here sees a scrum feed to the Roosters, 10 metres out in centre field, but it's going to make the point. Ausskilled, they're returning in 2020, and we'd love you to join us here on MacArthur Sports Radio. Group 6 League Live, if you're interested or you'd like to get involved, get in touch with us during the week via social media. And we'd love to have you on board for 2020. Before, it, before you know it, Craig, we'll be into round one. Try me Another try. Actually, Maycomb has three. Off the back of the scrum. Only a couple of minutes gone in the second half. And went from the back of the scrum to the right. Three or four players outside of it. She didn't need any of them. She just went on her own and scored. 28 nil the score. Kip McGrath, Norellan and Campbelltown scoreboard. With 22 minutes remaining in this preliminary final. And I think Mosvale now are playing for pride, Mike. Yep. I think we can uh, safely say that it'll be Camden and Thulmere in the Women's Rugby League Grand Final next Sunday morning at 10.15. Very unlikely that uh, Thulmere will come back from this. Uh, Mossvale. Uh, Mossvale, sorry. Uh, very unlikely that they will come back. It was 34-6 last week. The only way it will happen is if Thulmere start thinking about next Sunday and clock off. Mm. But I can't see that happening. I'm pretty sure that Mitch has got them all um, hyped up, ready to get into that grand final to yeah. revenge that big loss they, they had to Camden last week. They've got to make up for it. So 28-0, Mikolev 
and not seeing the game last week, the way Thormia are playing today, they're playing some very good football. Oh, they're a very strong side, uh, the Thormia Roosters. But uh, Camden certainly do have plenty of talent across the park. Mika left, does miss one, finally. Yeah, so when it was further out into the... Yeah. It was further away. Probably mid-range on that right-hand side. Yeah, she's, right -hand good, she's side. Good 10 metres either side of the post, but when it gets a little bit... When it drifts a little bit further out, I think it might be a bit out of her um, range. Out of her range, yeah. So 20 minutes remaining in this preliminary final. It's 28-0. Thilmia over Mossvale. Yes, you can see a nice little scoreboard there. There's a, the old scoreboard on the eastern side of the ground on halfway. You could uh, see a nice little, uh, and it, it doesn't need to be a big one, just a little no. just a little one on halfway. Even the old-fashioned one with hooks on it with little well, kids no, kid sitting I was up there with numbers on it wouldn't the, matter. Well, I think that's what that used to be that's in a previous used to be, life. Yeah. The one I would go for is the old basketball um, scoreboard. The, the, old bas the electronic basketball one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know put, the ones you mean. We put that on halfway, that'd work perfectly. And it certainly wouldn't break the uh, the Picton budget either. But I think something like that, and ev even at uh, Crane Oval, something like that would be a handy addition. Yeah, it would be. And as we see, Cindy Kay, have a word to the, the powers that be out at, out at uh, the Jettas. See if we can get that going for next year. There's a good run there from Lisa King. Takes on two and three. Kemchevsky over the top, making the tackle. Time off here, 19.35 remaining. Yeah, I think she got crushed. She ended up at the bottom yeah. of that tackle. Alvarez. And, uh, 14 underneath Lisa King, who is a, certainly a solid girl, Lisa King, and Alvarez, certainly a smaller build. So, certainly, I, I don't, th don't think there was anything uh, no, was malicious a, in it. She just tackled her head on and... She just, just fell the wrong way. Just landed. She just ended up on her back with mm. the other girl landing on top of her. Yeah, just fell the wrong way. Alvarez just having a, a breather. A gorgeous Sunday morning, I have to say. It is a cracking Sunday for rugby league. And thankfully, that uh, roaring that roaring wind we had yesterday has, died. has disappeared. And we have a gorgeous Sunday. So get down here if you're in the area. Uh, a lovely day for rugby league. Uh, we'll just have a look here. Yeah, 15 degrees at the moment, heading for 19. So a gorgeous day, a perfect day for rugby league. We've got another injury here. We've only had about 20 seconds. Once again, I think it was um, player caught under the bottom of the tackle. Mm. I think the, the technique is often for these ladies who are probably playing their first season of rugby league. It's just a little bit the off. technique is just not quite... Yeah, not quite there at the not moment. Not quite there. And, and if we are to be to be critical, that's probably the biggest flaw they have, is just technique and, and skill just not quite at the level required. Just in defence. In attack, mm. they seem to be going OK. They've got the same sort of um, skills as um, the men. Yeah, just the, the technique of fraction. And it only needs to be a fraction off to... Your to timing's only got to be a pr millisecond off. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've seen players get their head in the wrong position just, when just they're going the to wrong make a position, tackle. Yeah. They're going to make a tackle head on and they've collided with the knee of the player running yeah, the ball. Yeah, or a hip. Yep. A uh, hip often causes trouble uh, on the on, in those situations. But yeah, it only has to be a, a millisecond off and, uh, and that's the end of it. And, uh, I mentioned yesterday, this crowd here at Victoria Park, a very healthy crowd here, bigger than yesterday, certainly. See a lot of maroon and gold down at the, the southern end of the ground. They'll be waiting for reserve grade at 115. Well, they've got the ladies and their reserve grade side, so they've got two teams playing today. And at least one in uh, next Sunday. Looks like it'll be two and the hope of three. That's right, they've got their first grades in. Looks like the ladies will go through. And they'll be hoping to get... Uh, hoping to get their reggies in. Get the reggies up. But uh, they face a mean picked and outfit which will not be a, an easy task. No. That should be a really good game this, uh, this afternoon, 115. Certainly wouldn't say it's the, the curtain raiser because that will be a, a fiercely contested battle. As we get back underway, 19 and a quarter minutes left in this. Yeah, the girl has gone off, has gone off with a bit of a bloody nose. Looks like she's got a, a whack to the nose. The ball bouncing. Kamchevsky falls on it for the Dragons. 
The winger there in uh, Matty Rosa. Didn't want to know much about that bouncing ball. Great defence under the ribs, Rani Lee. What a hit there. Textbook tackle. And the thing is, the two girls are probably the two smallest on the field. <laughs> yes. On run buck. That was a great hit there. Yeah, they were the two smallest girls, but that was one of the bigger hit of, bigger hits of the day. That was a great hit as well, Alvarez. Three of them there to stop her on, just short of a 40 in centre field. They go to the left-hand side. Picker finds, looks like uh, Acton out there, Leah Acton. Nine short of halfway, eastern side of the ground. 18 minutes remaining. They kick across field, not the deepest kick. Will it sit up? It'll get knocked back by pick by Mosvale. And that'll be a turnover on the last, five short of halfway. Not a bad option there from Mosvale. They kept it alive on the on the second run, but just not quite, not quite able to keep it alive as much as needed. It looks like uh, Bernie Lee's about to come back on for the Roosters. There's Cindy Kay taking it forward. Again, bodies in the ruck, and I think uh, Kamchevsky's in trouble again. Blonde hair of uh, Nat Kamchevsky, easy to spot the bleach blonde hair. She's face down. We might take a short break while we have the chance. And you're on MacArthurSportsRadio.com and let you know how you can be part of the team in 2020. If your business is looking to break into the local advertising market or your current advertising package is not working for you, come and join the MacArthur Sports Radio family. With a range of sports covered throughout winter and summer and packages to suit all budgets, the team at MacArthur Sports Radio can tailor a package to suit your needs. Call today on 0490 403 933 or Google MacArthur Sports Radio or simply find us on Facebook. MacArthur Sports Radio, MacArthur's home for live sport. One little, two little, three little tradies, four little, five little, six little tradies, seven little, eight little, nine little tradies, all just got qualified. Get qualified, get that pay rise, get that promotion or get your own business going. Turn your industry skills into a nationally recognised qualification through OzSkill. Best of all, you can get qualified in under six weeks using their unmatched RPL support system. Secure your future today. Visit ozskilled.com.au for more information. All just got qualified. Back here at Victoria Park, it's 28 points to nil in favour of Mossvale's opponents, Thulmir and Nat Kamchevsky on the... She still hasn't got up, has she? No, it looks like they're working. It might be a left leg. But she's at least she's at least sitting up on the ground. That's right. Before she's she was flat out on her back, but now she's um, sitting she's up, sitting which, is, up right which is a good sign. Yeah, certainly a good sign. It, let's hope this injury is not too serious. For the Dragons. Worst time of the year to get her injuries in the last game. Yes. And even referee Brown assisting Kamchevsky. It looks like it might be an ankle, actually. Yeah. It looks like a left ankle injury for I can't Kamchevsky. see her um, returning to the field for the no. rest of this match. No, certainly not. Certainly not. Mm, can't put any weight on that left leg. As we get back underway, the Roosters, there's... Uh, Lisa King, driven back in a good tackle on she's the 30, the, and she's, she's lost, lost it in the tackle. Good work from Mossvale. They certainly haven't rolled over here, the Dragons. They forced the error. About 32 metres out in centre field. Yeah, they definitely haven't given up. No, they, uh, and credit to the Dragons. Uh, running a small squad, only about 15 or 16 players. So uh, running a, a bare bones outfit, but uh, as, I, as I wrote uh, in the preview, they've got plenty of heart. Uh, they may not be the most skillful or talented team on the field, but they will play with heart all day long. And uh, we did hear earlier this morning, we're having a little discussion, I won't give away too much, but speaking to one of the officials from the Highlands, possibility of a new team uh, emerging in 2020. Which... Uh, I, I think we both agree it would be a benefit to to the Highlands region to have... Well, at the moment, they've um, only got one side in the um, A-grade competition, haven't they? Yeah. As we see, a penalty to Mo Mossvale. 
This is strong, a, a strong Southern Highlands area in Group 6. It makes it a much stronger competition. Yeah, certainly does. And I, I for one, certainly think that... Um, I still remember the grand final between Picton and um, Mossvale at uh, Campbellton Stadium a few years ago okay. when it was very close. That was before my... Uh, I think it was about 8-6 or something the score was. It was yeah. a very tight grand final. That was before my involvement. I don't remember that game. Uh, my first grand final since I came back to... Um, back to Sydney about, a, well, about eight years ago now was actually here at the Victoria Park in 2012. And the Roosters played on that day. Okay. Uh, against the team we won't mention. We do wear the same colours as, as Mossvale. Oh, yeah, I think I remember them. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was my first grand final, coming back to uh, back to Sydney after some time away. Yeah, the Picton Mossvale grand final, I think, was a year or two before that. Yeah, I, I was uh, out of but town. But it was played at Campbelltown Stadium. Would that have been around the time of the... Uh, it was prior to the merging the of prior? the two competitions, okay. yeah. Okay, I was wondering whether that was around that time. I think it may have been the last... Could have been the last, last one before. Last, before, last or the last but one before that. Yeah. So it was around that, not quite that time, but so a little, what bit, was little that bit before around, it. What was that around 2009, 2010 roughly? Um, yeah, possibly. Somewhere around there? Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay. But yes, uh, there, there's certainly talks of, uh, uh, certainly discussions being had. I don't know whether we'll see the, the famous Red V back in the short term, but certainly uh, uh, we will see football in the in the Highlands, and it certainly looks as though there'll be two teams out of the Highlands in 2020. Maybe not the way you know them. No, oh, it's a good break here. It's a great break from Rani Lee. Gets oh, the ball back on the inside ball. to make him. Has three. Can she beat the fullback in Middleton? She can, and she'll run away for number four. Under the posts. A great try that was. That good was break a, by the centre. And, and she would certainly, if we were awarding one today... Uh, would certainly get the Player of the Match award. Yeah, she can win the bottle of Mount Franklin water. <laughs> yeah, it's about our budget today. 14 minutes remaining in this preliminary final. It's and then you'll have to put in a dollar for it. Yes. 32 nil. Thilmy leads Mossvale in the preliminary final. 14 minutes to go here at Victoria Park. But uh, Maycomb has had an excellent game. Four tries today, and Camden certainly will need to have their watch on her come next Sunday morning. I'm sure they're watching the live stream up at Kirkham Park today. If they're not here. If, well, if they're not already here, that's they true. They may actually be here. That's true, but I, I would imagine if they're not here, they would uh, they would certainly be watching up at Kirkham. In I'd, the say, I'd there. say they'd be spying on what's happening today. No doubt they would plotting, have. Um, plotting how they're going to manage this Thelmy juggernaut because they're playing quite well today. Well, they, they did win 34-6 two weeks ago. Mikalev adds the extras from in front. Gives her four, uh, five out of six. 34 nil the scoreline. That's definitely in her, within her range, those shots. <laughs> yes. 10 metres either side of the post. Likes those ones. Uh, there's some of Mikalev. I think they're going to give her a bit of a um, break now. She seems to be coming to the sideline. Um, it'll be an interesting matchup next uh, next Sunday in the Women's Rugby League Grand Final. If you're thinking of going to Campbelltown Stadium, I suggest you get there get early there to early. be there to watch that game. Oh, football. absolutely. I've only seen a couple of games this year. and uh, The way I look at it, if you're going to pay admission, you get there for the first game of the day. Get you there for the whole you lot. You don't just get there towards the end. You get there from the start because there's some great rugby league on, uh, on show. There certainly is. And the next game coming up, the Under-18s Grand Final last year, that was our... I, I would say that was the game of the day. Uh, from memory, Norellan and Picton. Yes, it went down to the wire, didn't it? It did. And the Jets looking to go back to back in the grand final. Yeah, unfortunately, I was in having surgery then, so <laughs> I um, I missed uh, missed last year's grand finals. Yes, but uh, you'll be there next Saturday and Sunday. 100%. You cannot wait. Would not miss the grand finals. Yes. Looking forward to the big day next Saturday. We can fill in half the equations for next week. Well, there's, we know half the sides that are playing. Well, we've got the, well, we've got the, we've got the ladies' tackle sorted. Yes. Um, and we know the Saturday games because they all played yesterday. Yes, that'll be uh, 
the Oaks and Picton in the league tag. Two decider at 2.15. At 3.30, Narellan Blue and City Blue in the league tag. One, 4.45, Warragamba and Barrel in the... Uh, Southern in Highland the Shield, Shield. Yep. and then at 6.30 Norellan and Campbelltown City in the uh, second division grand final and then first game next Sunday will be Camden and Thilmy from 10.15 at Campbelltown Stadium all those matches and I, and I will give the group credit for this having all the matches at one venue this year as opposed to previous years where we have travelled on Saturdays and Sundays I think putting all the games at the one venue over the weekend certainly makes it easier. I think it's worked out well because mm. the stadium, I think last year, wasn't available both days. I think that was the reason why they couldn't... Um, and I think they had to put it back a week because of something... No, the, the, there was the same weekend. No, no, but wasn't there... At the start of the year, they put it back a week. The whole competition went back a week because of the double booking at Campbelltown Stadium. Was that, or was oh, that another sure. year? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't but no, remember. It's but been uh, the same weekend for certainly the last four or five years. The, the yeah. second weekend of um, September. Of September certainly has been that date. Great defence from Thurmere. Mossvale had a scrum feed ten metres out, but Thurmere ensured they didn't get over the line and they only found the sideline. No, they've played on that second weekend, certainly for uh, the, oh, four, is, the four or five the, years. This is actually the third weekend, though. Well, it is. Yes, it will be. But It yeah. will be because of the first and second last week, yeah. September, and then today's the second weekend. So. Yeah, but they've played on that same weekend um, for certainly the four or five years I've been broadcasting. They've been uh, at the stadium on that weekend. So I'm looking forward to next Sunday. You'll hear all four games on Sunday through MacArthurSportsRadio.com. The two, the two second division matches on the Saturday, you'll hear those as well. The two league tag games. I'll just double check with our technical operator off to my right. I'll just confirm we are streaming those games on the Saturday afternoon for the league tag. Certainly on the Sunday. Yes, we are. Thank you. Let's get a nod there that uh, we will be streaming those two league tag. A little bit of afters here. And a penalty to Thirlmere. The, the Thirlmere player wanted to play the ball and she wasn't allowed to, so she gave the uh, Mossy girl a bit of a push. And the Mossy that girl was Taylor was, Timms, the Thirlmere. And the, and the Mossy girl was not happy with the um, reaction, so she arced up and gave her a bigger push. Yes. Penalty goes to Thirlmere. That was Taylor Timms. I was a bit concerned, though. I thought the penalty possibly could have gone to Mossvale because I thought the Thilmy girl overreacted in the play the ball, but um, Mark Brown saw it the other way. Yes, so the penalty stands. Boy, oh, boy, the defence from both these sides. They have put their bodies on the line, these ladies, and deserve full credit. This has been an excellent display. Bit of a high shot there from... Uh, from uh, Emily Bundy on one of the Moss on one of the Thirlmere players, but they have put their bodies on the line and deserve full credit for doing so. They are not backing down. As we said, the technique may not be uh, 101 out of the textbook, but certainly has been uh, very willing, very willing, and, and credit to the girls for for not backing down. And even though the results well beyond doubt, they have not uh, not left anything behind. These Tims. 11 metres out from the line, western side of the ground, 10 in. Go out of dummy half now through uh, the number 18, Jamie Witten. Only nine metres out on the last. I'd have a shot for field goal myself, <laughs> only because you, you may need it next weekend. You're up by 30 points today. Ball goes to ground. Yeah, you're up by 30 odd points. You're under the post for field goal. Yeah, I would have been tempted to have one because you never know. Next weekend, it could come down it could to come down to that that it's level with a minute to go. With, with a couple of minutes left, there's uh, not much in it. So yes, it'll be interesting because it, it, the game's gone. They've already won the match, and why not have a shot? Yeah, well, that, that's what that's the only thing I would say against it is the game's beyond the results beyond doubt. So, but you, one point doesn't make a difference make either a difference, way. But you set it up for next week in case you need it. It's always good to have a practice in an in-game situation. In it's case okay you at, need it. It's okay at training. You can do it all day at training. And yeah. 
there's no opposition running at you. But to do it in match, to do it in the match in match conditions, match conditions when yeah. you may actually need it. I remember a few years ago in, at Narellan, one of the guys took a shot for field goal early in the game, and the, somebody said to him, "Mate, what, what are you did doing you do for?" He says, "We may need it come semi-final time." And they played at Mittagong on a Saturday night in the semi-final, and, and he kicked a field goal to win them the game to get them through to the next match. And he said, I practiced that during other matches, and that's what got me, that's what that's gave me the confidence I knew I to do, do it. it. So that's why I always think, if you're winning by lots, you might, as well, might, as, well, might as well have a crack when you're yeah. in that position to see if, you know, because you're under fatigue, you've already played nearly a full game of football, you've got five minutes to go on the clock, so you've played 60 minutes, of, almost 60 minutes of footy, 50 minutes of football, you're under fatigue, you're tired. Why not have a crack for a point? You're 10, 15 metres out, last tackle, right under the post. Why not? Yeah. And as we said, the scoreboard, it won't make a difference either way. No. If you miss it, then it's not, you know, you're not going to put your team under pressure. And, and, and one point, still getting a bit will in this game. With the number 10 there, that's... Uh, oh, she's wiped out her own player too Gabby, there. Gabby Pinozzo firing up. She's pulled the Mosfell goal around. She's slammed her into her own player. A little bit, just a little bit of... This is going to blow up here. We've got a penalty to Mossvale. I think that's for accidental offside. Yeah, it was accidental offside, but then... Straight up the middle, Mossvale. Another penalty for inside the 10, and the referee's going to call... No, got for a high shot, I think. Oh, for a high tackle. I think it was for a high tackle, and 10 minutes in the bin. So She's got 10 minutes in the bin. They'll be down to 12 for the final five minutes. Let's see if Mossvale can put on 32 points in five minutes <laughs> <laughs> against a 12-player 12, 12 opposition. Yep. I can't see that happening. Let's Neither hope, can I. I'd, I'd, be, uh, I'd be happy if they scored a try. That's what I was going to say. I'd be happy if they got one try in the next five minutes and they scored points. I think they'd be, uh, despite not winning the match, they'd be content with one try uh, to their name at the end of the day. So Mossvale, 41 metres out. 20 in on the western side. They go... Left hand side still very flat. The uh, the Dragons Miller. Yeah, there's no depth in their attack, is there? No, it's and, been like that all. Not a lot like of. That, it's been like that all day. Not a lot of support from the Mossvale. No. Uh, runners. A lot of one out running. Yeah, they put the kick in. Downfield doesn't know much about that. The Mos the Thilmere fullback in Maria gets back into the end goal. Just goes dead. One bounce too many over the dead ball line. Or has he ruled a line dropout? He has. Yeah, I think... Um, Might have got a touch. I think she did. I think she sort of tried I thought to she'd done enough to get away with it. From mm. our position, I thought she'd done enough. I think the referee got a call from his um, touchy. Yeah, I think the touchy sort of came out and said, no, it was not dead by... No, she um, did get a, a touch on it. So the dropout from under the posts. That's a good dropout. Goes about 35 metres on the fly. Taken at the back by Amber Middleton. Into the line, 30 metres oh. out. Big defence there. Cop that. They didn't appreciate it either. And they're up swinging. Yeah, April stons over the top penalty to Mossvale. Now clock showing three and a half to go. A little bit of fire in the belly of both these sides. I didn't see Mark Brown signal time. No, I don't think he did. No. So three and a quarter minutes remaining in this one. Score is beyond doubt. There's Gretel Tut inside the 20. And even though there's some big hits, the Mossvale girls are still willing to They're um, rolling take up. the hit up. They're rolling their sleeves up and taking the hit up after hit up. Give me the next one. There's uh, Bundy. Bundy fends off a couple. Still going, Emily Bundy. Good run from her. Big Al Bundy. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to resist that one. I thought you might have been, but... <laughs> yes. I was trying not to go there. Certainly wasn't Peg Bunny, that's for sure. There's uh, Dafina slung to ground on the 10-metre line. Knock on. And a knock on as well. Now we've got time off, 2.39 to go. And this has certainly fired up, as we saw last night in the uh, second division match, fired up in the final five, ten minutes. Was that the City Pickling one? Yeah, it came to because life. Because that ended up, that, came, that started to come to life when we were at um, Saturday with Norellan and... Um, Campbelltown City started to get a bit willing towards the end of that it match too. It didn't get willing, but it just, it was in a real slumber for about 50, 60 minutes. In the and last, then they woke up. And then everybody woke up in the last 10 or 15 minutes and we had a, a cracking finish. Mm. 
Uh, certainly wasn't nasty, but just a... Well, poor Mossman girl's um, flat out again on the ground, so, yes. but she's up. So, well, a bit of a wobbly boot on, I think. Yes. Let's see Kemchevsky down on the touchline. I don't think she'll be back today. Uh, the number no. 13. No, she's, um, well, considering there's only two and a half minutes to go, yes. and she limped off, I can't see her well, going couldn't back Well, put weight on that right ankle, could she? No. Uh, so, I'll be amazed if she's back next week. Or she, she'll be back today. And good to see the Thilmy girls uh, shaking hands with the, the Mossvale bench as they head off to the, their own dugout. Good to see the spirit of rugby league alive. Playing hard, playing tough, but playing fair. At the end of the day, we all shake hands. You see the referee for the next match coming out in the field to start yes. doing his warm-ups. Alex Ward in charge of the under-18s. He'll have his hands full. Yes, local derby between Mount Annan and Narellan. Now, I'm not overly familiar with the under-18s, but a lot of those, it, would they have grown up playing against each other, those? Oh, I'd say they would have. I'd say a lot of the Mount Annan kids and Narellan kids would have gone through the grades against each other. And no doubt probably had a couple of years together. And the same thing at Camden with the Narellan, the Camden and Mount Annan boys. They would have played against each other in junior football. And they would all see each other in the schoolyard on... Uh, oh, I'd say most of them would, yeah. At, at either camp. Although Mount Annan have their own high school and um, Narellan's yes. got Lizzie Mack. So, but there are, there's still the crossover of there, kids there going to both be, schools. There would certainly be a crossover. And some could even go to Eldersley High. Yeah, well, that's what I, I was thinking. Eldersley and Camden would be the two schools that would... Uh, would attract the, the most students in that area. Well, no, Elizabeth MacArthur's um, attracts a lot of the Norellan players. Okay. That's their school of choice. Ba ball to the outside. Can Mossvale get on it? No, it'll beat Goes everybody in touch. touch. Beats them all into touch, so we'll have a filmy scrum feed. 10 metres out, 20 metres in. Clock running down inside. Two minutes to go. Results have been on in the bag for a long time. I think it was all over at halftime, Mike. It pretty well was. We've only had two tries in the second half, both going to Ashley Makem. She's got four on the day. There's the number six for Thurmere. Other tries to Emily Pinney, uh, to Ellie Pinney, apologies, and also to uh, Maddie Charlesworth, the halfback. But Makem has four to her name. And they're looking for another one here, the Roosters. Long break downfield over the 40 to halfway. The Cavalry's coming. I don't think they're going to catch her. It's Mayorea. They pull her down, do they? Yes, great cover tackle, 15 metres out. Oh, should great be a work for a there. Flop there. The Mossvale fullback flopped after she's still on the ground, but referee lets it go. I don't think the ref saw it. Make him, make him. No, she'll give it away. Thompson under the posts. There's the icing on the cake. Light the candles. They're headed to the grand final if they weren't already. 38 nil with a kick to come from in front. We're under a minute from time. <laughs> Vanessa Thompson puts her name on the score sheet. I think they might need a new goal kicker. I think Nicolas might be uh, might have been taken off earlier to have a rest for next week. I'm just having a look. I'm not I sure. See Although her. maybe that is her out there with I the ball. I can't see her on the uh, touchline. Maybe they brought her back on. No, that's the. Uh, the, the, uh, no, that is Mikulev, sorry. So they must have brought it, because I, I did see her come off before, so they gave a bit of a break, and they must have brought her on with the last five, ten minutes to go. Yeah. So she'll take the shot at goal. She's six from, uh, five from six today. Uh, and this is in her range under the goal, <laughs> under the yes. post. As we've said, she's ha uh, only had a couple of kicks that have been remotely difficult. Well, one that was really difficult, that was the one that she that missed. That was mid-range on the right-hand yeah. side. There's time on our clock, so this will be the last play of the day. And yeah. the Thilmy will go through I to can, the grand I final. I can see the Group 6 official reaching over for the, um, All the timer. Put to put his hand on the, on the hooter. So Mikulev from in front, 10 metres out to make it 40. 40 nil in favour of the Thilmy Roosters. She does. Flags go up. There it is. 40 nil. Thilmy are into the grand final. Well, final score, Thilmy 40, Mossvale nil. But to be fair to Mossvale, they did not stop trying all day long. And the Roosters celebrate on the field. They'll take on Camden next Sunday morning at 10.15.
to open the Sunday proceedings on grand final day. A Sunday ticket. And it'll be a massive Sunday at Campbelltown Stadium. So full credit to Mossvale. They did not stop trying all day long, but just outclassed by the filmy Roosters, who have been too good. 40 points to nil, the final score. I can't think of the coach's name for, for Mossvale, but he's been around a long time. <laughs> long time with the Mossvale Club because I think he's been involved in their first grade, reserve grade and 18s through the seasons and uh, it's a shame for him because he is a Mossvale uh, stalwart. I just, yes. that, for the life of me, I just can't think of his name. I'm afraid I can't help you there. I think it might be Fish or something? Uh, known as Fish, yes. Yeah. Uh, known as Fish uh, by the locals. And good to see the team shaking hands on the guard of honour for the opposition as they as come off come the off field. field. And the Roosters will be very happy. I can see they're very ecstatic. So our next game is not for another right. Um, Actually, we're only a couple of minutes away. So we might wrap it up. Yeah, we might wrap it up here on MacArthur Sports Radio, the first game of four is done. Thelmere are through 40 points to nil. They win the preliminary final. We'll have the under-18s match up next. That was another game of Group 6 Rugby League. Brought to you by the team at Group 6 League Live.